Welcome back to a championship version of the Wolverine.com TV podcast. And uh, Doug Skeen's <laughs> with me, Michigan's former All Big Ten offensive lineman. Skeen, I got two words for you, okay? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kool Aid time, it? right? <laughs> How many gallons is. of Kool Aid did you drink over the weekend, Ballas? <laughs> uh, probably as much as you. And you should be guzzling it because these guys are Big Ten yeah. champions. And that's what you've always been saying, man, is like, you know what? We got to see some championship DNA here, some championship level football. And we saw it. The way they responded after that Michigan State uh, debacle, or as Joel Klatt said, uh, as a, was thievery, essentially. Um, he said, hey, the way they came back and, and fought, uh, the Penn State game comes to mind. Nebraska was clearly before Michigan State. But the way these guys came back and played like the Michigan teens of old that didn't panic or fold their tents scheme when things went bad, that's what reminded me of the old days. Yeah, it was – God, it was so many things refreshing about watching that game um, coming off of the Ohio State game. And this looks like so many things that we all remember about the program with some new twists and changes and obviously a whole new set of players. But the one thing I'll never forget about watching that game is just the satisfaction, the joy on the players' faces through the through the tough part of the game when it was – tighter and it was closer but at the end it reminded me of us 25 30 years ago and and those guys that that achieved that victory in a big 10 championship they're galvanized forever ballast their names are going to be on the wall at schembechler hall their team is going to go up there along with all the other ones and that is the most satisfying part to watch all those players enjoy that moment man it was special it was awesome and I want to tell people that Doug Skeen, yes, he's in his car. He has a full-time job, people. Okay, he's doing this <laughs> yeah, do. for peanuts to appease you from wherever he can go. So uh, he will be exchanging his bath towels at Bed Bath & Beyond in a minute, but we've got him for about <laughs> 18 more. So, uh, but Skeen, uh, share with us what, uh, now Chris Hutchinson, Aiden Hutchinson's dad was actually mic'd up to talk about his all-American <laughs> defensive end son. He said that was pretty tough. And then tell us what Aiden said to him after the game. Yeah, so obviously keeping in touch with Hutch and, and I and I talked to him and, and I can share one story. There's a lot of things that are funny and enjoyable about the weekend, but I thought this was funny that um, Aiden came up to his mom and dad after the game and obviously very excited, very emotional, very happy moment for the family and the sisters were there and everything. And, and Aiden said to Chris, you know, I just realized that uh, you guys, you know, all those years ago, you guys didn't have to play in this Big Ten championship game. You guys didn't have to do this. So all your championships are BS. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's great. I bet they bleep so that Hutch, out on Chris's mic. Yeah, right. So so Hutch Hutch was laughing. He's like, yeah, you know, it's we didn't have to do that. It was 30 years ago. Of course we didn't have to do that. But I think it's, it's funny. Obviously, Aiden doesn't dismiss his father's big 10 championships that's not the point the point is is the difficulty that this michigan team had after the emotional victory over ohio state to then go beat a tough iowa team the way they did that's a little extra sauce that aiden and his teammates will absolutely have the rest of their lives over us old guys because we didn't have to do that and uh, yeah. it's exciting for them because uh, i was thinking about that you know aiden in that family uh, dynamic over there and forever will be able to tell his dad yeah we did something that you guys never did so that's pretty cool stuff it is pretty cool stuff and if there was one 1990 comes to mind when you shared it with like half the conference and uh, maybe that ring <laughs> should have we'll replace the diamonds with cubic zirconia you know and go back just for the right. kids here so uh i'm guessing you're not in line with that so but that's okay hey yeah every championship is earned even the shared ones back then uh, it was a gauntlet still. I mean, Big Ten football was was tough. and uh, But now I get his point. Uh, you get over the hump and you finally slay the dragon. That's Ohio State. And now you're playing in another game. And I remember the Rose Bowl days, man. You guys had to go back out there after you beat Ohio State, which was the goal, and uh, get motivated for that. But to his credit, Jim Harbaugh has done one heck of a job here with these guys, getting them refocused for a physical Iowa team. They took the punches, and Iowa came out swinging, uh, but the adjustments were fantastic, especially offensively. And Skeen, uh, before I let you answer, one of the things that I uh, noticed in the second half was they did a lot more check with me uh, on the sideline to counter the blitzes from Iowa. And normally I hate that just like you do, but I thought that was critical on Saturday. 
Yeah, the only thing that that I would like to see is is McNamara or McCarthy making that call themselves at the line of mm-hmm. scrimmage. Look at the defense and make the call yourself. But that's not the system that Harbaugh and Gaddis have set up. It is what it is. But it was nice to see them do it because Iowa clearly, as predicted and as is expected, a very well coached team prepared for what we do, which is that gap down blocking ballast and then pull a guard, pull a center, bring a tight end from the backfield, bring a tight end from somewhere else for the front side. They they had a game plan to defeat it and it was working. And and Michigan had to make some adjustments off of that. They did offensively and defensively. I thought the post halftime there, second half adjustments were really good. Uh, Iowa defensively was not letting us get to the second level. They finally got called for it. Mm -hmm. Um, But when our combo blocks weren't getting home to those linebackers, those dudes were running free. And every time you saw, you know, for example, the right side, Stuber there and Zinter would down block, where those linebackers were flying to that side. And we couldn't get up to them because we're being held at the line of scrimmage. That was, for anybody that maybe doesn't have a little perspective, for a defensive lineman to get called for holding is one of the most most rare penalties you will see in a college football game. And that was one of the reasons we were struggling to run the football effectively like we had been. So credit to Iowa. They tried. Uh, obviously, they fell short. Uh, Michigan, you know, was a little, little clunky there, uh, you know, coming out of our own end zone, two or three possessions in a row. That was frustrating to just get out of there. But um Again, we, we knew Iowa was going to be well coached and perform well as they did. They just not going to be, they were just not going to be able to, to keep the Michigan offense down. And then, of course, the defense cranked it up and made things very uncomfortable for their quarterbacks. And they made the change there. But um, it kind of went uh, the way I thought. I, I predicted, uh, you know, a couple score touchdown. Didn't think it was going to be that big. But overall, it was an outstanding performance. You saved your best for last. You actually won staff picks, I believe, this week, 38 to 17. So <laughs> you got the monkey off your back. I think, how long have you been yes. doing this for? About 15 years. This might be your first victory. Yeah, I don't know. But it seems like a long time. Yeah. We'll we'll add that to your uh, your ladies' tea championship up there at uh, Tullymore that we did. Oh, we'll give yeah. You a, yeah. We'll yeah. give you a little trophy a trophy. afterwards. Yeah. Uh, trophy for that. Yeah. Teams. The late. Ladies yeah. T champion, Tully Moore, 2021, for sure. That's at the yeah. top of my list. Right below Michigan winning the Big Ten championship is my favorite thing sports-wise that happened this year. <laughs> there you go. And then third place in staff – or first place in staff picks for the Iowa game. Congratulations. So, right, um, right. I wanted to ask you uh, how Iowa was slow in Michigan's ends early in that game. They were going low. Uh, I don't like it. Uh, it's legal, right? But, uh, man, you got to watch your knees when those guys are coming on the edges. And that was something I hadn't seen them do all year. But they seemed to realize, and they realized certainly late in that game when Hutch put another guy on his ass – that, uh, that they could not handle Michigan's defensive ends, that they were going to go low, they were going to do whatever they could to slow them, and that's how they were handling it. Is that something you noticed? Oh, I noticed it, absolutely. Um, there's, a, there's a few rules of life, Ballas, from the football field, and one of those rules is uh, no matter what era you played in or no matter what era you're going to play in, defensive linemen absolutely hate offensive linemen cut-blocking them. Now, Cut blocking is legal. It is when one blocker engages below the waist against one defender. Illegal chop block is when one guy goes high, one guy goes low, and you have two on one. That is illegal. That is the 15-yard penalty. That is not what Iowa was doing. Iowa was going down low on our defensive ends, and you want to piss a defensive end off, you cut block him a couple times. You'll do two things. You're going to slow him down because now he's going to wonder, are you going to, are you going to cut at my knees? Are you going to stay high? What are you going to do? They got to figure out when you're going to throw the curveball there. But ultimately, you are going to continually piss them off. And when we used to do it, uh, when we used to do it, we always knew there was going to be a 15-yard penalty coming at some point because that dude was going to get so pissed off. Uh, But Iowa was doing it effectively. They were cut Mm -hmm. blocking. Uh, It was one of the techniques they used to slow down Hutch and Ajabo and our other defensive ends and interior defensive linemen. And that is perfectly within the rules. Um, it didn't work in the end, and, and ultimately the one Iowa tackle there got caught for the 15-yard uh, tripping thing deal, and that's that's dangerous. You can't yeah. you can't do the leg whip thing, you know, circa 1967 in the NFL. Those guys used to do that on purpose, man, and just whatever, right? Lower legs, you know, that was nasty football there. 
Uh, and I don't think Iowa coached that. I don't, I don't suspect Iowa to be a, a dirty football team. No. But it worked. It worked for a while, Ballas. And, and then, and then of course, you saw a couple couple snaps there. Hutch just took the offensive tackle and threw him into the defensive – or the offensive backfield. So, you know, if you're an offensive lineman and you're going to do that cut block stuff, you need to be prepared. You're going to get a fist in the throat at some point because you're going to piss that dude off. It's just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, as it is now. So it's yeah. good stuff. Uh, talk about the job Jim Harbaugh did this year. And I, I you know what, we said it, uh, I'll continue to say it, that it started with him getting his edge back. And he said last year, I don't feel different, you know, and everything else. But there was something missing that was not missing this year. And you could tell from the get go that he was on it. Uh, the fact that he's donating his bonus money, by the way, back to the university uh, to the to pay people uh, just blows my mind. That's what a gesture. But they're going to have to pay this guy because if Mel Tucker is making 95 million bucks to finish third, you know, what do you pay the Big Ten championship coach that did such a great job? Yeah, it certainly resets some things. So on the top of your point here, Ballas, you know, I, you and I were openly questioning some of the things that coach Harbaugh had done coming into this season and the previous few seasons are pretty rough. And we just saw some tendencies out there that were difficult to watch guys making mistakes, guys having dumb penalties. And yet they were still on the field, still playing for Michigan yep. and boy, what a night and day difference. So absolutely all the, he got all the criticism when Michigan kind of stunk and he gets all the credit when Michigan wins a big 10 championship. And so he goes out, he rebuilds his coaching staff, and the, the, the production and the results are obvious. The one thing I would mention that, that is a great piece of evidence for why this team, among many reasons, why this team is different, the coaching staff and the way they coached differently. Early in that football game, Aiden got a pressure on the quarterback. It was a third and whatever, and, and it was an incomplete, and I was about to punt, right? But on that same play, Upshaw comes in and gets up in the quarterback's face and says something stupid and draws the 15-yard taunting penalty, um, which has been called all year long. That, that one got me up off my couch. That pissed me off because that's just dumb football. And it was a turnover. And I watched closely to see if number 91 Upshaw was going to be back in that game anytime soon. Uh, unless I'm wrong, Ballas, I did not see him until the very end. He got, to, he got to spend the rest of that game watching from the sidelines. And I would say that in previous previous couple seasons, that didn't happen. We hey. saw guys out there making dumb penalties and boneheaded football, and they were back on the field. And so there's a level of accountability that goes into things. And, and when you hurt the team, you pay the price, and you don't get to play. Those are good things, holding guys accountable. So, yeah, absolutely. So Jim Harbaugh gets all the credit. You know, he's he took on the new contract, which was half of the half of the salary he had before. And what an incredible thing for him to do to take that money and give it to all the other staffers in Ann Arbor that that lost some income because of the mess that we've been going through the last couple of years. So I think it speaks to the, the character of Jim Harbaugh, the character of the coaches that are on his staff and the overall character of this team. But Coach Harbaugh kept saying it, and I believe it. The reason this team is as successful as they are is because of the leaders on the roster. And we all know who they are. He's listed their names. And you and I have been talking about them all year. That, I believe, to be true, that is the number one reason that this football team is Big Ten champions. Yeah, 100%. Uh, the culture is back, and let's hope it stays there. And a big reason for that is Kay McNamara. Can't tell you, Steen, there's a handful of people still on that site that can't wait to get rid of this guy and put him on the bench for J.J. McCarthy, <laughs> uh, to which I say you're absolutely crazy. And it uh, blows my mind uh, that you still have these people that are, are acting this way. Just I, I don't understand it. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I guess it's easy. To just, it's, it's easy. You know, you and I do it too, right? It's easy to sit on the couch from the, uh, the press box view and, and say, oh, this guy's not very good. And in all fairness, McCarthy has some tools that McNamara doesn't. And, you know, one of the things that we noticed, actual X's and O's, when, when, when Cade is running the read option, he's not really a threat to run the football, and Iowa's defense was treating it accordingly. They were not even respecting the keep to go around the end with McNamara. And then all of a sudden, here comes McCarthy, and he keeps it, and he's got some wheels. The kid can run, and he's now that's a different threat, no doubt. 
McNamara throws among the very best crossing route passes we've seen in college football this year. And I, and I know that's a big statement and he's not perfect. There was the one that was behind Eric all that ended up being an interception, but just his, the way he consistently delivers the football, he typically does not put the football in danger. He is a great quarterback. And I use that great word because he's on a championship team now, Ballas. He's earned a championship, an outright Big Ten championship. So he goes down as one of the great Michigan quarterbacks because of that. And the criticisms, well, I guess, will never end. Uh, but I think it's exciting that those two quarterbacks are part of this base offense. They do both play, and they both bring their strengths. So I, I'm absolutely comfortable with, with uh, the way this system has gone, and I'm sure we'll see the same against Georgia here in a few weeks. Yep, we are losing connection here on this end, so something's going on. But, uh, Skeen, thanks for joining me. Uh, we will do this again. We'll break down some plays next week uh, on Michigan, Iowa, and our end of trenches. And, uh, hey, go slug that Kool-Aid, man. It's been fun. <laughs> go blue. <laughs>